Hello and welcome back to Inquisitor Martyr. Last time we ended up fighting a bunch of Tyranids and including fighting Tyranids while in the Crimson Wanderer. And now we get to go back to the planet and talk to the Harlequin. Inquisitor, may I remind you that you have only gained temporary respite by eliminating the Simon's creature. The Tyranids are still unorganized, but soon another organism will replace the original Simon's creature. I have no time to lose. You must locate that Eldari So I've seen a bit of discussion about uh, Trays in the Infinite lately. People pointing out that his big menagerie of stuff could be used for a bunch of story pl like plot points and new things because going through his collection he has what was it a essentially a giant space marine wearing baroque power armor a crork k r o r k wearing power armor more advanced than even space marine power armor uh, he had a temporal device that had demons that kept, or no, it was Tyranids inside, and they kept breaking out. So he had to eventually just flush them, effectively. <laughs> but people were like, oh, well, you could have that Krork be, like, the a Primarch for orcs. And I was like, that, that's a little stretch, and my guy, that, that's a bit much. Especially when, I don't know, I wouldn't consider Krorks, because they're essentially the the Orc Primes, like the Beast was with the War of the Beast and the other giant Orcs that were with him. I, I wouldn't call them a... Uh, I'm trying to think. Ugh. I wouldn't call them a Primarch. Because that just doesn't fit. It's like the Primarchs were progenitors. While I think realistically what these Orc Primes are is likely just an evolution on the Orc. I don't think it's anything more or anything less than that. Granted, I would like to see more of them kind of show up. Just so that there's a bigger challenge, because orcs... I feel like everything in 40k is kind of becoming... very bland. You know, it's like, oh, here's orcs for the hundredth time. Ooh. You need to kind of step your game up and make them... seem dangerous again. But the people were saying how during the destruction of Cadia that part of some of Trazen's collected I don't even know what to call them just his collection he ended up releasing so they're like oh well a bunch of stuff could end up being new plot points and they could show up and all I could think to myself was we already have enough open ended plot points that aren't being touched on. I don't think adding more is going to help anything. I mean, chances are they wouldn't even touch on them anyways. I almost feel like there's, to some degree, a backlog. I think to a degree that's because of how like Black Library and Games Workshop, how they do their writing. It's not like how Star Wars was, where they're just like, yeah, just just write stuff. It'll become part of Expanded Universe. We don't really care. You know, there was tons of goofy stuff. Meanwhile, they're very... Games Workshop is very particular about what's written. And to a degree, I understand. You know, you want 
pretty strict control over your IP. You don't want very poor quality stories being written. You don't want inconsistencies. But I think in that same vein, what it should be is be a little more open to people writing instead of... Because I've followed some of the writers and they've said flat out, it's pretty much you're handed a concept and told, write about this. You know, space sharks. You're writing a story about space sharks. They're doing this. You put your own spin on it, but this is what is being written. Are you willing to cooperate? It works. But it is definitely not a very creative way of doing things. And I think that's a bit of a problem. And the thing is, you could maintain pretty stringent quality controls, but still allow people to write generally what they want. Because as long as people aren't writing like, oh, and then this guy comes in and kicks Abaddon in the nuts, and then he flies away and bangs Eldar chicks for the next 40 years, as long as that's not happening, you're fine. People just can't write, you know, like dipshits. I've promised you answers, human. That's the whole thing. I swear, that's the last time I deal with the And I don't think that should really be a problem, considering it's... It's not that difficult, and that's what editors are for. If someone hands in a thing like, yeah, I want to submit this, you can go through it and go, no, this is dumb. You're not getting this published. You know, right there, boom, you have curved the problem before it became a big issue. I mean, come on, there was, what was it, CS Goto? Goto? The guy who wrote that Eldar were hanging off of a... They stole, like... God, what was it? Like a rhino tank that had multi... Laz on it? Well, like a multi-laser turret? And they're, like, hanging off it like apes. And it just did not fit any understanding of how the Eldar worked. So it's like, if you can allow that to get published and you don't have a problem, you can't really have a lot of ground to stand on to be like, Oh, you can't have this. And honestly, it might allow for some cooler stuff. What do you make of this ancient prophecy? Do you have a destination for- Gotta talk to everybody. And we gotta find Grexus again. So I'm sitting here using the loading screens to think, and I really think that, yeah, writing... 40k would be real easy, because all you have to do is provide, honestly, a detailed design bible for writers. You know, your rule sets, you can't introduce a new Primark, basic stuff like that. And like I was saying, you could do interesting stuff. You could introduce new chapters of Space Marines that are, you know, offshoots of others. You could introduce new Chaos War bands. You could introduce new things for those factions. And maybe you add a new miniature to based on that and some new rules we have the you know it's not that wild because then if you're running out of creative ideas you can just fall back to the plethora of books you have written that's what they did for Star Wars they did that for decades and yeah I know using Star Wars as kind of the example isn't always the best especially given the past you know seven years but there is, it does set certain precedents that aren't bad. You know, hey, you can use expanded universe stuff. 
you can take from something and turn it into a bigger plot line if you want. Or it can just be someone's little storyline project. If someone wants to write a story about their Inquisitor that did all this stuff in, a, in one sector of space, who cares? It's not going to have grand effects on everything unless you, as the higher, you know, in control creative side of things, let it. Otherwise, it's just that Inquisitor doing their thing. That'd be the easiest way to go about it. You get a bunch of books. You could even have some people branch into comics, even though I... Oh man, the comics industry is doing rough. But I think that's that's a whole nother song and dance as to what's up with them. But in the end, you know, you could do a lot. Have this stuff written, have it be its own isolated things. And be pretty good. Like, the biggest thing would just be having more editors on hand to make sure people don't screw things up. Short of that, pretty fine. They just need to actually go for it instead of really just putting all their weight on the same handful of writers. Because as much as I enjoy the writers they have, it gets kind of samey when you can tell certain people's writing style, and that's all there is. And that's the thing that always floors me, is Games Workshop seems really keen on getting themselves further and further, like getting their name out there, getting it further and further out there, but they really don't try. It's like, hey, I want to be famous. So I'm just going to sit here and hope it happens, I guess. Like, no, you have to take steps. You have to do things. If you only stick to the same thing, like if you only have the same handful of writers, you're only going to get so many people. And you're going to have that mediocrity, because those people are going to be writing very certain things. Like, do they really have a horror writer? I don't think so. To my knowledge, none of the people are really good horror writers. So they're kind of stuck trying to figure out, okay, so we don't have anything we could do for a horror-style book set in Warhammer 40k. Which really wouldn't be that hard, considering all the stuff in 40k, but I also feel like part of the problem there is with how horrible the setting is, how do you really separate horror from just everyday life for some characters? I mean, come on, servitors are people who are lobotomized and turned into robots. That's pretty horrifying, and you can't really try to make that any more horrifying than it already is. Unless you go full-on, like, strogification scene from Quake 4, where you're sitting there watching it happen to you. But you can't do that in a book. God, the strogification scene was so good. Ah, oh, it makes me wish we get a new Quake game. That wasn't just Quake or, or Quake Champions. It was Quake Arena, let's be real. Bethesda just wanted to cash in on the whole arena shooter style, but that genre is kind of dead. But yeah, it, the books definitely need to be expanded on. This way, like I've been saying, they can tie up some loose ends, really kind of tighten down and create a few more actually condensed storylines, introduce new characters, new villains, mix it up so that people can actually be excited and be like, oh, who's this bad guy? Instead of just, surprise, it's Abaddon again. 
Or surprise, it's just Araman again doing some more zinchi stuff. Cause that's what a lot of these encounters boil down to is just, okay, which of the, you know, five named big bads is it gonna be? And of course, they each have their own unique shtick, so you can't really even sit and say, oh, who could it be? Oh, mysterious virus outbreak? Hmm, that sounds like Nurgle. Oh, it's Death Guard. Oh, it's Mortarian. Who would have guessed? Oh, bunch of psychers start doing stuff. I wonder who it could be. Could it possibly be? Oh, it's Thousand Sons and Araman. And maybe Magnus the Red. Who would have imagined this strange set of coincidences leading up to this? If they introduce some new guys, I think they could mix it up a little. It'd also be nice if the like subgroups of Thousand Sons all didn't look the same. It is the most agitating thing. Because I found, you know, painter lists and stuff, and it's like, oh, here's all the offshoots of Thousand Sons. They all look almost identical in armor, and their paint schemes... It's like, oh, here's blue and yellow. Here's cerulean and gold. Here's, you know, every offshoot of blue and yellow you can imagine. And I'm just sitting here going, really? We're, we're just going to keep rehashing the same two colors? Especially when the Horus Heresy version of them was red and gold. Yes, it's essentially turning him into magical Ronald McDonald, but who cares? I'd like a little bit of variety here. Inquisitor! What a sight for- Yay! We rescued him! Now we'll talk to Grex this quick. So tell me, Inquisitor. All right, and that is all for now. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button. It helps out the channel a lot, and if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.